Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Help support our channel by going to ecoware.us. We carbon offset the production, shipping, and life cycle of every product, and we plant a tree for every order. So it's carbon negative. And we're brought to you by abetterrootplanner.com. They just came out with their new Android and Apple app, which you can sign up for down below to get a 30-day free trial. And we're sponsored by our friends at the solar-powered hotels in Schaumburg, Illinois, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, and the Town Place Suite Hotel right next door. They're the first and only hotels in Chicago that get a majority of their power from the sun. Now, before we get into this episode on Battery Day, I just want to remind everyone that Jesse and I are not stock analysts or financial advisors. We are both Tesla shareholders, and we are long on Tesla's stock. So you should not take our advice or construe any of our opinions as financial advice. And you know that whenever we have a uh, discussion Disclaimer like this at the beginning of the video, it's going to be a doozy. So sit back, relax, go grab a drink, and let's get right into it. So battery day should be happening soon. This is where Elon and Tesla will be announcing what they have been working on in the secret core of Tesla's skunk works on all sorts of technology innovations and improvements. Much like on April 22nd, 2019, when Tesla held Autonomy Day, and they disclosed what they were working on with software and the new autopilot hardware, Tesla Nation is excited about upcoming Battery Day. So there's a lot of conjecture in this episode from Jesse and I, so keep that in mind. This is not fact. This is what we think might be happening. But the reason we think it might be happening is some clues that we've heard from Elon. The first of which is that Elon said during the Q1 call in April, we want to leave the exciting news for that day but there will be a lot of exciting news to tell. And I think it would be one of the most exciting days in Tesla's history. So that was one breadcrumb, and this is another one. At this January's earnings call, Elon said, battery day, people, wait until battery day. It's going to blow your mind. It blows my mind, and I know it. So that is another breadcrumb to show that this is not your typical boring you know, the market strategy in the <laughs> third quarter of the eighth term under which confines and pivotal confines. This is something out of the box. This is something exciting. This is not your boring, typical business stuff. And one more thing to remember, Elon has stated that Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So as we're talking about things on this in-depth, keep in mind the words accelerate, world, sustainable energy. So many people are talking about what will be announced at Battery Day. Some are saying there could be over a terawatt hour of batteries announced or robo taxis being able to drive 100,000 miles a year on a million mile battery. But that's not all Elon has up his sleeve. We're conjecturing in this episode that Tesla will be announcing more than just a 1 million mile battery. This is in conjunction with research from Ross Tessian and his excellent article in Seeking Alpha, Tesla may increase earnings with virtual power plants. So the writing seems to be on the wall. Tesla started by needing battery manufacturers like Panasonic to do what they do, make batteries, and let Tesla focus on what they do, which is making cars, the powertrains, the motors, the autopilot, etc. Now, Tesla has an amazing engineering base, and they have been working with Panasonic in studying batteries and have acquired Maxwell and Highbar. And through the work of Jeff Don and his team, we think Tesla is chomping at the bit to make their own battery cells. And just this week, we are seeing job listings at Fremont for line cell production engineers. And why would you need line cell production engineers? Well, so as we reported on Tesla Time News, South Korean Hanwha Corporation has signed a deal with Tesla to supply battery formation equipment to Tesla. The formation equipment will be delivered first to Fremont and then to Giga Nevada, Shanghai, and Berlin. Now, wait a minute. Isn't this just giving away what Tesla is doing? Wouldn't they want to keep this secret until Battery Day? Well, remember, Battery Day was supposed to happen back in March. And we think that Hanwha has been delayed in getting machinery up and running at Fremont because of the global pandemic and the Fremont shutdown, which has been going on for the past couple of months. So let's stop for a second and process this. Tesla is now going to be making their own cells right at the location where they make the cars. This is vertical integration at its finest. Tesla doesn't have to worry about buying cells that are going to be marked up from other manufacturers. They're going to make them themselves, which is going to bring the cost of their cars down. And they're not going to have to rely on other manufacturers that may not be able to deliver those cells, as we're seeing with a lot of other auto manufacturers. And since the major battery suppliers weren't innovating fast enough, Tesla leapfrogged them. We believe Battery Day is waiting for Elon to show off a new functioning battery line because Tesla is all about revealing real products, not pictures and plans. Yeah, if you think about other reveal days, 
almost always they drive out the new product and show it to you in its prototype form. Right. Or it's under a sheet on stage and they remove it. And here's the thing that we made. Not uh, we're going to be planning uh, further uh, down in the 2027 and uh, you're going to maybe see a prototype and then we'll do an unveiling and then we'll do a leak and then we'll do a uh, another unveiling. But we'll call it some other name. And then um, uh, now don't get me wrong. This is big news. For most other companies, this would be a couple years worth of big news. Just the fact that they are shifting to becoming battery manufacturers. Because this puts Tesla into one of the fastest growing industries today, battery storage. But this is not the mind-blowing news that Elon talked about. Because this is something us Tesla watchers have been talking about for a while. It was inevitable once you understand Elon. Now, in the latest earnings call, we reported that Elon and Zachary Kirkhorn, the CFO, mentioned that the gigafactories should now be called terrafactories. Remember, giga equals a billion and terra equals a trillion. Now, why would they mention this? Well, I think in the call, it was because the Gigafactory Shanghai and Berlin are going to be much bigger um, in scale than the actual Gigafactory in uh, Nevada. Well, they used the word bigger, but I don't think the physical size of the Gigafactories is going to be any bigger. I think it's going to be that they're going to be able to produce batteries at a much bigger scale. And here's how. Maxwell has a dry electrode technology. Now, picture you are making, let's say, cement bricks. You mix up cement and sand and water and you form them into bricks. And then what do you have to do? You have to dry them. You need to spend a lot of energy and time to dry them at a factory. And you need space to dry these bricks you just made. And you are limited by these factors. And so that's exactly what you have to do when you're making batteries right now, because you have a wet electrolyte, which you have to add to the battery and do a bit of drying as well. Well, what if I could give you a technology to make your bricks? And as soon as they came out of the forming machine, voila. They were done. So no drying process at all. Also, this wet solvent that is used to make batteries today, not only is it a toxic solvent that has to be carefully handled and recycled, which is costly, but it makes the batteries degrade. Every time you charge one, it reduces the effectiveness of the battery. So by eliminating this solvent, Maxwell has solved and simplified and improved many things all at once. Yeah, less cost to make, less energy to make, less time to make, better batteries, safer for employees in the environment, and less space and time. A huge amount of space at Panasonic's uh, Gigafactory Nevada plant is drying. So now they can pack in more battery making with less employees and less time. Now let's go to the next piece of this puzzle. Jeff Don's latest battery chemistry could be pointing to a battery that isn't as affected by charging up high or running the battery down low. That would be huge news in itself because essentially you'd be improving so many aspects of the battery. You could charge it up to 100% and run it to empty without damaging it. So let's remind people that when you have a battery right now, uh, let's say in your cell phone, a lot of times you plug it in at night, charge it all the way up to 100, then you use it all day long the next day and you maybe use it down to zero. The battery does not like that. Right. And it's damaging the battery to do it. And that's why your cell phone battery sucks after two years, because you've been mistreating your battery. Teslas and uh, some other electric cars are different in the fact that they will actually limit the amount that you can charge up. And Teslas will, in, in fact, inform you to lower your charging limit so that way you don't charge the batteries all the way to full unless you have to. But that means that you're carrying around a lot of extra weight that you can't usually use most of the time because you can't charge it full and you don't want to let it get down to the end. So you've got all this wasted percentage at the top and bottom of the battery that you're not using. And as we talk about some other exciting developments, uh, this technology is going to become a little bit more relevant. Now, I forgot to really stress here that by using Maxwell's dry battery electrode tech, there is way less time spent making the battery. You're no longer mixing a slurry to exacting specifications. This is a simpler dough, so it is faster to make. And by eliminating drying, Tesla eliminates all the time to dry. So by reducing the time by a huge factor, maybe 50% or more, and then reducing the space of what would have been dedicated to drying by about 20%. Coming back to the terafactory statement, this could be one of the technological leaps that would allow a gigafactory to become a terafactory, packing so much more cell production into existing square footage. Again, this isn't sexy but it is transformative. Every percentage of space and time efficiency equals more batteries that are going out to cars and power packs. Now let's go back to Jeff Don and his newest report. 
Jeffrey Don and his students Yulong Liu and Jesse Harlow have published a new research paper called Microstructural Observations of Single Crystal Positive Electrode Materials Before and After Long-Term Cycling by Cross-Section Scanning Electron Microscopy. <sighs> This would result in less cobalt being used in the battery and higher energy density of the same battery. Yeah, in the paper, they showed how they achieved high cycling data for the NMC622 and NMC811 batteries while using even less cobalt than in the NMC532 batteries and achieving even greater energy density. And this news just came in last week. Tesla has a new battery patent for a tabless cell. Yeah, this allows for the electrons to get out easier. So if we think about a battery as a roll of toilet paper, because remember you make a long roll and then you roll it all up to make the battery. If you were an electron in the very inner core of that cell to get out now with today's batteries, you would have to travel all through all the roll to get to the electrode and get out, which, which creates heat. Heat, exactly, ohmic resistance. This new technology would mean that the cathode runs along the entire roll and then you squash down a conductive cap, making it easier, cheaper, and less ohmic resistance. And rumor has it that the next cell will be a bigger diameter, perhaps 50 millimeters versus 21 millimeters, which would give additional energy density to the battery pack. So normally battery engineers were trying to work within a triangle between charge and discharge rate, cell volume, and cathode thickness. And basically, Tesla didn't work within this triangle. They blew it up entirely. Now, Jeff Don recently had a video up in which he had discussions about how this new battery technology could be used for V to G. And then soon after the video was released, it was taken down. Why was it taken down? Hmm. hmm, why was it taken down? So, but wait, what is V to G? All right, so V to G means vehicle to grid. And so what this means is powering the grid using batteries stored in a vehicle. Or the opposite taking power from the grid and storing it in the vehicle. Well, keep in mind, that's what electric cars already do. They already take energy from the grid and store it in their batteries. Key point here, though, is that you plug into the grid and you say, I want to charge up now. With vehicle to grid, you're giving over the control of your battery to someone else, to the grid operator. So, I mean, is vehicle to grid possible? Because we haven't heard pretty much anything about any successful vehicle to grids. I mean, why is this? So first you need a charging standard that supports it. And currently CCS here in the United States does not. Chidemo does. So Nissan has demonstrated this in the Leaf, for example. We told you about uh, 7-Eleven stores in Japan where you can plug in a Leaf and power the store with it. And so in limited instances, we've heard about it, but nothing on a bigger scale. Second, you need an inverter box of some kind. Now, wait, that's way too expensive. I mean, the wall box Quasar, for example, costs $4,000. Yeah, and so some have said that that's just too expensive. Who would pay that? But I want to keep in mind that uh, if you could turn your Tesla into five to seven power walls for the cost of $4,000, would you do it? I mean, <laughs> five to seven power walls, that's $25,000 to $35,000. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty easy money. So if $4,000 isn't so expensive to now turn your car into a vehicle to grid storage device for the VPP, maybe it's a pretty good deal. So I bet a lot of people get mixed up when we're talking about VPP, um, especially when we're saying V to G and VPP. Now, let's talk about what VPP is. It is a virtual power plant, VPP. Imagine a power plant in your mind and now break it up into about a thousand pieces and spread it across a city oh, or no, a county it, or a state. It's broken. I, okay, well, I should have been more specific. Instead of a coal burning power plant, you should have been imagining solar voltaics. Okay. So I just broke it up, spread it, sprinkled it over the city. I don't, uh, I'm having trouble picturing it. So a VPP is basically solar systems, in some cases with battery pack storage, in different locations that are all able to provide power to the grid at an instant. And gotcha. so if you, especially if you can add in batteries, that makes a very strong virtual power plant. That's why I was saying you can use a V to G on a VPP. Okay, let's not use dumb acronyms whenever possible. Let's so you can use vehicle to grid on a virtual power plant. So you were just saying that uh, people with houses with solar on the roof and maybe some power walls could be used on this virtual power plant that a bunch of houses could be replacing a peaker plant when the grid needed power. Exactly. And so by using your vehicle 
on that virtual power plant, you can significantly increase the amount of energy storage capacity because vehicles, by their very nature, need to store a lot of energy. Take, for example, a Tesla Model 3. You're looking at about 75 kilowatt hours of energy storage in that one battery. Yeah, that's a little more than five power walls worth of energy stored in your car. And keep in mind that that would be about $25,000 worth of power walls. All right, so how do you get a virtual power plant to work? Well, you need software. Okay, so who's working on that? Tesla is working on it. They have this program that we've been talking about called AutoBidder, and there's nothing else like it on the market. It's being used as we speak in South Australia for the Hornsdale battery and a VPP. As Tesla says on their website, AutoBidder has hundreds of megawatt hours of assets under management that have supplied gigawatt hours of grid services globally. AutoBidder operates at every scale from aggregations of behind the meter residential systems to 100 megawatt utility scale installations. With seamless integration between hardware and software, AutoBidder can be trusted to capture revenues immediately after project energization and 24 seven in dynamic environments. So, I mean, this is extraordinarily complicated. Like oh, it, yeah. it's it's simple on its face where it's just like you you're taking a bunch of energy and you're giving it to people who need the energy. But in actuality, there are a lot of things to consider. Yeah. Think about this for a second. So if your solar system is on my VPP and I have access to it, I know on the web that you're up and running and it's sunny today and I know how much power you're putting out. But at any moment, a cloud could come over and cover your system and then you'd lose a lot of your power. But I need that power. I've just I've just bid on it and I'm going to supply it to someone. I need to know that I have reliable sources of power even when that happens which means there's complicated algorithms that have to take into account weather and locations and whether or not your system goes offline while I need it. And that includes battery storage as well. Basically looking at the grid, seeing what the grid needs, saying like, oh, the price of electricity is going up because demand is going up. I'm going to uh, sell some energy out of the batteries. And then during off peak hours, when not a lot of energy generation is needed, you can actually charge up those batteries. Or you could take a look at the solar duck curve, which happens now that there's so much solar in the world. Um, there's this curve where solar during the middle of the day is enormous in terms of the amount of power that it puts out. And what that means is it lowers the price of energy during that time. And for the rest of the time, the price kind of goes back up. So if you're able to kind of scoop out that energy and hold on to it, you are taking a huge advantage away from traditional grids, which can't store any energy. You might be sitting at home right now and saying, well, this is a bunch of malarkey. They can't possibly do stuff like that. Well, as we speak, the lights you're seeing on here are controlled by National Grid. They have control of my four power walls. And so if any time they need the power for an outage, they can take over my power walls and supply power to the grid. And they don't do it very often because they don't have auto better. Right. So to back up our argument here, Tesla just applied for a power utility license in the UK. So Tesla isn't creating a part of a utility. They would have all the pieces they need to be a power utility because with this million mile battery, it now allows for vehicle to grid and with auto better, it allows for a virtual power plant and with a virtual power plant across the world means a renewable grid that is all made and controlled by Tesla. Now you're getting it. VPP means that every Tesla car could, in theory, be a part of the VPP battery solution, giant batteries on wheels. And we've been talking about this for the past five years. A power wall is 13 and a half kilowatt hours of energy. A Model 3 or a Model Y is 75 kilowatt hours of energy. So the million mile battery is the breakthrough needed to make this a reality. So why hasn't this been done before? All right, well, without a million mile battery, would you allow your car today to be used as a grid storage device? Uh, sure, why not? All right, wait a second. I'm gonna be charging up and drawing down your battery a lot. Aren't you worried that I'll prematurely wear out your battery? Oh, right. The 30% to 70% comes into play. And I mean, yeah, all that cycling of my battery, it's the same as if I had been driving it a lot. So no, I guess I don't want you to take over my battery and have control over it because it just means a lower life of my battery. Right. So without that million mile battery technology, you don't want to be part of this solution. Most drivers let their cars sit idle for 95% of the time. But now with a million mile battery and VPP and V to G, you can get paid for having your car sit there plugged into the grid. Now I'm making it seem easy to have a bunch of cars take the place of a peaker plant, but it's not. 
it is a complicated problem to solve. But AutoBidder shows that they have figured out how to solve it. Because as we pointed out from the recent presentation by two Tesla engineers, Colin Breck and Percy Link, they were discussing VPP and AutoBidder, and Tesla has figured out how to take all these diverse homes with power walls and solar and aggregate them into a usable power source for the grid. Well, a bunch of cars are essentially the same thing. They're just mobile power walls. And again, this is where Tesla really shines. Because Tesla is the place that is known for the place with the smart engineers, it attracts the smart engineers because right. if there's one thing that smart engineers like, it's other smart engineers. And what this does is it creates an environment where these ideas don't get stifled. They continue on. They go, okay, let's keep going down the logical chain. What else could we do? Hey, hey, we're making batteries and that's pretty new like in the world, aside from like double A's that you're gonna put in your remote control. What else can we do with them? And so this begs the question, why would Tesla wanna do all this? Good question. Tesla already has a million vehicles on the road. If the average battery is, let's say, 75 kilowatt hours, then that's 75 gigawatt hours of storage. So that's 580 Hornsdale wind farm battery banks, 580 of them. Wow. Hornsdale sold for $90 million. So let's do the math. Tesla's fleet is now worth $52 billion, making each car worth $36 thousand dollars. That's just if we count them as batteries for the grid. And keep in mind that the Tesla Hornsdale battery has already paid for itself. Okay, so wait, you're telling me that on top of the price of the vehicle, on top of the value of the Tesla car of a Model 3, say my Model 3, you're saying that there's an extra $36,000 on top of it in value? How? Well, first of all, not your Model 3, because your Model 3 doesn't have the million mile battery in it. Okay. But a new Tesla with a million mile battery in it would be worth an additional, say, $36,000 because the car can now be used for multiple purposes. One use is for you to drive around in. The other use is as a mobile storage battery. OK, so I mean, I get your math there. If we extrapolate the price of the Hornsdale battery down to the size of battery of my car, then it could be worth $36,000. But if I buy my car and no one else is going to own it, where does the money come from? Okay, well, that's where AutoBidder comes in, okay? Every minute of every day, AutoBidder will be looking for ways to use your car as a part of an aggregated VPP. So for instance, if someone drives to work tomorrow in a Tesla with a million mile battery, and if their work has a Tesla V to G charger and they plug it in, Tesla would control their battery. Now, maybe that person will give it some parameters, like go ahead and use my battery all day, but it, I'll need 100 miles in the battery at least before I drive home at 5 p.m., let's say. Wait, so I'm gonna charge up all night and then I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna plug in and they're just gonna use up all my battery power? No, so not necessarily. Maybe from, let's say, 9 to 11, they are drawing down your battery to feed the grid and paying you for that. And then from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., they're charging it back up with excess solar power from nearby homes which you'll pay a lower rate for. And then from 3 to 5 p.m., they're drawing some of your power back out to feed the grid again. Your battery just stabilized the grid and allowed for renewable energy to be seamlessly used by all. Meanwhile, you got paid some money and you saved some money. So my car is kind of like a stock trader of energy? Exactly. You are now a commodities trader. You're buying energy low, you're selling it high, all while you're at work or sleeping. And you'll be able to repeat this anytime your car is plugged into a Tesla vehicle to grid charger. So I can do this at home too. Yeah, why not? So in a lot of ways, this is better than a power wall because it's the energy is wherever you are. Um, it's able to do this all the time. It's a bigger battery and it's a battery on wheels. So like if you, for example, had an apartment or a house and you wanted to get a power wall installed in your house and then you wanted to move and you wanted to take it with you, You'd have to not only uninstall the power wall, you'd have to carry it with you. The yeah. nice part here. It's on wheels. It's already on wheels and yeah. drives itself. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, Tesla already has the inverter tech in their power walls. In fact, our power walls here at the house take AC power from the grid, store it as DC in the batteries, and then they reverse that process when my home or the grid needs power. And as we mentioned before, a power wall sells for about $6,500, and that includes the 13.5 kilowatt hour battery, but it also includes the inverter. So this is going to be a way cheaper solution than people are thinking. Okay, well, that's a good point. But that's if I own the battery. 
there is some flexibility here, right? Yeah, that's the really cool part. Tesla could decide to lease you the battery in the car. So basically sell you the car at a cheaper price and you're just leasing the battery from them so they still own it and can control it um, so that you're not making money from it in the same way, but you're saving money by buying the car. Oh, so they would be leasing it at a much reduced price because they knew that they would be making the money on the back end by buying and selling power using the battery that they're leasing you. Right, and you might be happy with that because you're like, hey, I'm getting a really cheap Model 3 or Model Y. So this could be one way that they significantly reduce the price of the car. It could be that you pay, I mean, I don't even know what the cost of the battery is in the car. It's a significant portion. Yeah, I mean, if Ross and you and I are right that the value of the battery could be around $36,000 over the life of the car, imagine lopping that off the sale price of the car. They would pay you $1,000 to get like the base Model 3. It could be. I mean, it would be almost free. So Tesla has a lot of flexibility because then they can still charge you money for the car, even though it, exactly. it's it going to end value. up being free. And then they can have you lease the battery for, say, you know, a pittance of what it it's actually worth because at the same time, they have an agreement with you that you are going to be plugging it in for a certain number of hours. And it's probably going to be very complicated depending on where you live, but that would be earning them the money back. So kind of similar to like a power purchase agreement where there's no money up front and you're paying a lower energy rate and Tesla is making money. Exactly. PPA. More in acronyms. Yeah. I mean, you would save money when buying the car and Tesla would own the battery. So they would be making the money under the arrangement. And maybe the lease would mean agreeing to plug in your car to the Tesla utility network so that Tesla can control the charging and discharging. As long as you're plugged in for a certain number of hours a day, Tesla is happy because they get to use your battery. And so the, the leasing and how much money you might make if you owned the battery, it would all be different depending on where you lived and yeah. how regionally... Uh, the power system worked. Right. I mean, I would imagine that there's these low hanging fruit areas for Tesla, places like South Australia, where the price of energy is very expensive. And so those would be places you'd want to focus on first, where the price of energy is high and where there's not a lot of battery storage. And this is complicated. We don't know exactly how this is going to play out. But what we do know is that the consumer will save thousands of dollars if they lease or make thousands of dollars if they decide to own the battery. And we know that Tesla will be making billions of additional revenue either way. Right. Tesla will be making thousands of dollars of extra revenue on the sale of every V to G enabled car with a million mile battery. Now, another piece to this puzzle is J.B. Straubel's battery recycling company, which he started in 2017 called Redwood. This is located in Nevada and it has been in stealth mode ever since he started it. So why is this? Could it be that Tesla is trying to offer existing owners with certain models of car the ability to buy the new battery packs and recycle the old packs? Yeah. Could recycling be cheaper than mining for raw materials? Because keep in mind, to get all the pieces that you need to make a battery means you have to go out there and mine most of them. If I just hand you a battery that has pretty much all the materials that you need to make a new battery, uh, that could be a lot cheaper than having to go out and find them in the world. And I want to point out the advantages to getting a leased Tesla battery pack. You would no longer, as the owner of the car, have to worry at all about the battery pack and the degradation that could happen. You would just be like, hey, do whatever you want with the pack, Tesla. It's yours. If there's a problem, I'll just drive it in and you'll replace it. And now Tesla doesn't care because it would go to Redwood and Redwood would be able to recycle it for cheaper than it would be to mine for the new materials. Redwood would just recycle all the batteries into a new pack? Well, I think what they could do would be to separate individual cells, the good ones from the bad ones. And the good ones, the, the cells that you know have had some degradation but don't, aren't fully dead, could be very easily put into a power pack. So instead of having to put all that energy into recycling this battery cell just to make a new battery cell, you could be taking all the good cells and put them into a grid scale battery. But wait, they're used cells. It doesn't really matter for a grid scale battery because it doesn't need to drive around. So the range of the battery doesn't matter at all. But I mean, you'd be putting like degraded batteries. Let's say they only had 70 percent of their life left into a power pack. Isn't that bad? Well, it just takes up more space. It doesn't really oh. have any other issues associated with it. What I think is really interesting here is that there's the ability for older model Teslas to get upgraded to new million mile batteries because potentially this could allow existing Teslas to be a part of this V to G VPP. Boosting their value immensely. Yeah, I mean, just 16 volts on many of the older Teslas means that you can pop out the old pack and within minutes pop in a new 
million mile battery pack. Right. And these packs could have better ranges, better charging rates, maybe even better acceleration times. OK, so let's just think about this for a second. I've got an aging 2016 Model X in the driveway. I think its value is probably down to around, I don't know, $50,000. But. If I could pay for a brand new million mile battery pack to be put in it, which would boost its range to I don't know what and would allow it to charge super fast because it now it can't even use the new superchargers. And it would have this new vehicle to grid virtual power plant feature, which would earn you money. Oh, my gosh. You've I'm... just increased the value of the car by a huge margin just by putting in a new battery pack, which we're saying might even be cheaper than the original pack they had installed in your car. And then Tesla could recycle my old battery pack and reuse it. Exactly. OK, so let's recap. The customer is going to be happy because they're getting a lower cost car or they're being able to earn money from the VPP. And they're never going to have to worry about degraded batteries again. Tesla's happy because every car gets added to a growing, huge network of mobile batteries that makes money from selling power storage to utilities and selling power to customers. And they get to recycle existing batteries into new batteries cheaper than the raw material cost. And there's another big benefit that we haven't even addressed yet. What is that? If your car is... Uh, has the same battery capacity as five to seven uh, power walls, and it's hooked up to your house in a V to G fashion, and you were to lose power, you now have the power of five to seven power walls. Oh, you've got a backup generator in your driveway. Exactly. And, and it's a mobile generator. You can bring it wherever you need it. You could. You know those times when it's like, why does my street not have power for a week, but everywhere else does? You could. Go take your car to the supercharger for 20 minutes, take it back and charge your house for a couple days wow. and then rinse and repeat if you really needed to. Wow. And you know what? The environment is also happy here because as Tesla ramps up, peaker power plants are going to close in droves and renewables will have tons of new storage. Because think about it, existing fossil fuel companies can barely compete right now. This is with virtually no power storage whatsoever. And to think about this, fossil fuel companies are kind of like um, fishmongers, they got to sell the power right now. Oh, right. They can't, they can't like, oh, oh, don't worry. We'll take this fish and we'll just, we'll just put it away. Right. No, 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 no. You, you're selling the power as you're making it. You right. can't store it. Tesla can store it. So they're saying, oh, you're overproducing energy right now. I will buy your cheap energy and now I'll just hold on to it. And then, oh, oh, you're running. Oh, you had some problem at the coal power plant and energy prices have skyrocketed. Oh, we will sell it back to you for much more value. No one else has this or will be able to have it for years. The moat is almost impossible to cross. Tesla is so far out ahead in terms of battery tech, production and software and brand. It's Kind of amazing to think about. Yeah. All right. So now I know that all of this sounds great and all, but there are no Tesla V to G chargers that exist and they're going to be too expensive to build, won't they? Well, keep in mind, these inverter boxes are going to make money for Tesla every single day, right? Because we talked about it's this arbitrage of energy. So Tesla is incentivized to install them. And this is a way for Tesla to install more chargers on people's houses, because now Tesla has an incentive to pay for the installation better than the existing program, which right now they're paying for the charger itself, but you have to pay for the electrician. Now Tesla would be willing to pay for the hardware and the installation. And so this just adds another layer of charging to Tesla's already pretty amazing charging network. Um, you know, we've had destination chargers for quite a while. Now you're going to have these, uh, you know, V to G chargers where you're going to be saying like, I am right now not doing VTG. I am simply traveling across country. So please just charge up my car. The incentive up till now for Tesla has been to pay for part of the cost of installing destination chargers just to make the allure of buying their car better. Right. But now with V to G and VPP, it's a moneymaker for Tesla. So there's a total incentive for them to do this. And this whole thing creates a better environment for their solar, both rooftop and grid scale, because it's smoothing out the duck curve. The problem that you have right now when you're installing solar is it's only generating at a certain time of day. And so you end up with this duck curve and all the grid people want to complain about duck curves and be like, you know, solar is great, but it completely destabilizes our grid. That's where batteries come into play. And there's no other game in town in terms of cost comparativeness, because right. once you build a solar panel, it's making you energy every day, as long as you don't cover it with a cloth. And if it's on a roof, it's going to be making power every single day for free. 
All you have to do is capture that energy and disperse it throughout the night. That's right. all you have to do. And Tesla will be able to do this and put peaker plants out of business. Now, another thing to think about is that many fund managers out there and bankers are waiting for Tesla to get listed as an S&P 500 company. So far, Tesla is $264 million profitable for the past three quarters. So with just a $1 profit in Q2, they could make it onto the S&P 500. Or they could take a $263 million loss in Q2 and still make it onto the S&P 500 in Q3, assuming they made $1 of profit in that quarter. And, and why is it important for Tesla to get on the S&P 500? I mean, it's just a list. Um, well, it really doesn't matter too much for retail investors. It gives them a vote of confidence, um, but it really comes down to stock indexes. Right. I mean, if you get on the S&P 500, that means that any index fund has to start carrying your stock. Also, it means that bankers and fund managers can now tell their clients, well, they're listed on the S&P 500. Uh, it's a very reputable company. And let's just keep in mind that there are only 185 million shares of Tesla outstanding. Now, over 20 percent of that is held by insiders. Elon Musk. 56 percent is held by institutional investors. So big funds. Only 24 percent of that is available for retail investors. Now, there's over 50 million retail investors just in the U.S. alone. So that leaves just 44 million shares available for 50 million retail investors just in the U.S. So if retail investors start to get turned on to Tesla, kind of like people used to be turned on to buying stock in Boeing or GM, then even if they just want one share each, there won't be enough to go around. That increases the price of Tesla by a lot. Now, going back to the moat, we discussed earlier a technological moat. But now, if we're right, Tesla will have a financial moat as well. Index funds, regular fund managers, average retail investors, when they all start loading up on Tesla, the share price is going to go through the roof. And this means that Tesla is going to be able to fund their upcoming Terra factory expansion by issuing more shares. Which you might be like, no, that will dilute the share price. But each factory will increase Tesla's value and therefore widen the moat more. So if we're right and Tesla announces the ability for a Tesla to be put on the VPP with a million mile battery, then no other EV will be able to compete. Why would you want to buy an Audi e-tron or a Jaguar I-Pace or a Ford Mach-E? It would be game over for any other auto manufacturer. Well, but I mean, they are still going to be good EV choices. Even if, let's say, an Audi e-tron is something you're interested in and it's a fun luxury car for you to drive, how could it compete with a Tesla that is worth $36,000 more just as a mobile battery for a virtual power plant? Um, well, it might have more cup holders. Have you thought about that one? Didn't think about that. And this also kind of spells the end for fossil fuel utilities. Yeah, I mean, how will existing power utilities that have to build multi-million dollar power plants and then pay to burn expensive fossil fuels compete with free solar and wind energy coming from the sun every day? The price of building renewable power farms is already cheaper than most other fossil fuels. Once battery storage happens on a vast scale, it's game over for these antiquated power companies. There will still be a need for power lines and maintenance, but no old school power generation. So let's take a look at Tesla's new potential value. In 2019, Tesla sold 367,500 cars and had a revenue of $24.6 billion. If every new Tesla car has an additional $36,000 of added value, then that would have been an additional revenue of 13.2 billion dollars. Remember that in October of 2019, during an earnings call, Elon said that Tesla energy could surpass the size of its automotive sector. He said it could be bigger, but it will certainly be of a similar magnitude. So that would be about a 50 percent boost to Tesla's gross sales. Now, is that why Elon Musk has said that 50 percent of future income would come from Tesla energy? OK, but what will Tesla's value be? The immediate answer is that Tesla can bring in 50% more revenue without doing much more than they're doing already. So that's 50% more value pretty much as soon as they announce this at Battery Day. Longer term, we're talking about disrupting power utilities and fossil fuels, along with potentially putting every other big auto manufacturer out of business. So what is Tesla's long-term value? We'll let you be the judge. But let's just remind you here, Jesse and I are long on Tesla.
But can you blame us? Everyone is thinking that Tesla has to sell bazillions of batteries to utility companies to grow its energy storage business. But what if it's simpler than that? What if Battery Day is all about Tesla having found a way to double its functionality? Is your mind blown yet? We used to chide analysts for not understanding Tesla because they said, oh, it's just an automotive company. And now people have been saying that it's not just an auto company, it's a tech company. But what if it's more than a tech company? What if it's a power utility company too? And what if it's gonna put existing big auto companies and many existing power utility companies out of business? Now, remember what we talked about in the beginning. Elon has a mission. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Would what we just talked about accomplish their mission statement? Uh, yes. Does it blow your mind? Yes, it does. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In-Depth. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more episodes like this, hit the subscribe button and also the bell button so it'll give you notifications every Friday when uh, In-Depth comes out. We also do Tesla Time News every Monday, and we have lots of other great content coming out all the time. You can hear about that over on our Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.